good match. You're right. Shitty finish. Here comes uh, another great match. Mm-hmm. Bobby Eaton and Arn Anderson. Meltzer would say these two had the unfortunate task of trying to follow the last match. The match before the main event on most pay-per-views has been a death spot because they've seen so many hot matches by this time. They just want to see the main event. So they put what on paper should have been the best match on the show here to alleviate the problem. And what happens, they have to follow a match of the year. So it's hard to get the crowd into it, but they work solid all the way. And, uh, he puts over that Eaton has dropped a lot of weight because he's been training and, uh, conditioning like crazy for his June 12th match with Ric Flair. Huh? That's interesting. And here we go. We've got Bobby Eaton. Who's going to be in a singles match here. Let's let you hear his introduction. Oh, I forgot. They've got that shitty WWE network music. I'll turn, turn that off, but they're really putting over that, you know, he's more than just a tag team wrestler. He's a hell of a man. And this is the opportunity he's always wanted. And we've never seen him you know, in this, I have this opportunity by himself as a single star and he's got a lot to prove tonight and blah, blah, blah. Is that probably the only Bobby Eaton sign you've ever seen? Yes. And here (laughs) comes Arn Anderson Mm -hmm. strutting that ass with the TV title. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play the entrance here from Minnesota. Arn was one of these guys. Don't you agree? And 40 that made him look real. He is the WCW about that belt. television champion, wow. the enforcer, Arn Anderson. Man, I love the throat slash and everything he did. Everything he did looked serious. Yeah, as you said, he made it look real. Mm-hmm. No clowning around with him. He took some heat for that throat uh, slash too. You know. There's a special place for people like you, the bottom (laughs) aren't looking good here. Got the yellow tights with the black letters and the black boots and the belt here. Not the, uh, original red leather TV title. This one instead has black leather and red backing, but I love that TV title design. It's my favorite. I think the one they replaced it with was not as nice. It did eventually grow on me. I call that one sort of the Steve Regal TV title. But uh, I always really like this one. I think that's probably the best television title design around. And I preferred the red over the black. How about you? I do. Uh, red, absolutely. That's what I remember. That's what I remember because that's what we had at the studio at TBS. Absolutely, I remember it. Arn took a lot of pride in being the television champion. He told me once that, uh, quote, that was my world title. You know, it meant as much to him as being the world champion because people you know, considered him sort of synonymous with that belt. So he took great pride in it. And you've got two of the best all time tag team wrestlers ever here in a singles match. And I want you to, this is a master's class in wrestling boys and girls. If you, if you don't normally watch, uh, these watch alongs with us, I want to encourage you to go watch this one, Arn and Bobby Eaton. We've talked about why, you know, it's hard to get the crowd into it because it's been a long show. This is normally the throwaway spot. They're putting a real match in here and it's after what many would consider a candidate for best match of the year, but they still do a great job with this. And they're trying to make Bobby Eaton and the little nuanced stuff that Arn Anderson does is outstanding. You know, Sean Waltman told me once that anybody can be trained to do the moves. It's what you do in between the moves that makes a wrestler good or even great. And the stuff in between the moves is what Arn Anderson is showcasing here in a big way. Just when he hit him, he would shake his hand. You see that? Yep. That's one of the little things. When Bobby Eaton hit him in the face, he checked his teeth. He checked his mouth. See that? Arn putting up those dukes as if he's punch, punch drunk. Bow. And down he goes. Yep. How how great a shape is Bobby Eaton in right here? Wow, he's he's awesome. He's he's thin to win right there, man. Yes, he is. And as as we found out when we were in Nashville, he's truly one of the nicest guys ever, and he he couldn't say anything bad about anybody. Refused. Refused to. I mean, we we set him up perfectly. He just wouldn't do it, and not just you know on stage in the back. Right. You know, I I asked you know, hey, who do you think? 
the most underrated wrestler you ever wrestled was. And we, we kicked that around for a little bit. And then I said, Hey, who was the worst? And he just wouldn't give an answer. No. And so then when I freestyled Van Hammer, he just laughed and pointed at me and he said, you said that, not me. <laughs> That's right. But I mean, he was not, I mean, li- literally there's four of us. It's, you know, us and Cassio mm-hmm. and he, he ain't doing it. Nope. Not shitting on anybody. I know he was the ultimate baby face. The ultimate baby face in the back is what Look he at was. this spot right here. A rocket launcher to the ramp. Right amongst the powder and the bear piss. A bear piss. You hated the ramp, right? Oh, big time. I fucking loved it. What I never really considered though, and man, this is, this is dangerous spots here. I know. You're going to tease the pile driver. Nope. Back body drop for an R and he's probably still feeling that one. Hmm. Anyway, what I never really considered until I heard Jim Cornette talk about the ramp, Jim Cornette, he fucking hated the ramp too. And on his podcast, he said, the reason he hated it is because you couldn't go around the fucking thing. I didn't really think about that from a managerial standpoint. There's so much of what you could normally do. You can't do here. Like chasing guys around the ring. That's not a thing anymore. And you know, it takes away a lot of maneuvers that you can use. And sort of old school wrestling tactics. I never really considered that. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, or is this just me just having a dream and, and it not really happening? Wasn't there a time that they had built a ramp and then the, they would remove the section right up against the ring. I don't, so rem- I don't pulled, remember that. For some reason, I remember that. I don't know if we tried it one time or maybe it didn't happen. Maybe I was just dreaming that. But for some reason, I remember that. I and mean, I, you, you know, know the, they still use ramps now, but the ramps come down to the floor. They don't connect to right. the ring and connecting to the ring. To me, I, I absolutely loved. I love that too. The old school. I'm going to wrap his knee around this pole, but before he does, he looks at the crowd just to get right. everybody into it a little bit. You think Bobby Eaton ever thought that haircut was cool? Yes, I do. I think people in Huntsville and Florence and all through up there, Muscle Shoals probably still think it is. You reckon those people that you're making fun of clip their goddamn toenails? Because I know you don't. <laughs> I was waiting. I'm thinking long pause there. He's got to come up with something. Well, Lois sent me a picture of you in a recliner sacked out as my mom would say you were asleep with your dog bug Mm -hmm. and your toenails no shit were Mm -hmm. two and a half inches long that was like two years ago so they're longer now (laughs) yes they're much longer they're much longer i feel like you should be in one of those national geographic magazines (laughs) like those ladies who have like the really long curly fingernails they're so long they curl like an arby's french fry and (laughs) I I'm loved thinking. your reaction to that, that shot too. Hey, you didn't miss a beat. You say you fucking climbing trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, man. I love this old school. Are you grabbing that rope for more leverage? No. Mm-hmm. Right there. And then he's, he's just, when the fans say something. Yeah, you know, I just realized body type wise, mm-hmm. Michael PSA is just like a slightly taller Arn Anderson. Really? Okay. Dude, if you put those old Freebird tights and a wig on Arn Anderson, <laughs> I'd give anything for that. Can you imagine? I would have given anything for that. <laughs> we should we should text him and ask him what he thought about. If, if they would ask him to leave the horseman and join the free birds with him and Garvin. Okay. I'm writing that one down. Can you imagine? Look at that. I love that spot. I do too. Top to bottom. I've never seen that. I don't think. Oh, I've seen it. I mean, if look I at, have, it's been a long time. Yeah, that's, that's good. But look at Bobby selling that still selling the leg. He was hopping over to get to Arn. Fuck. That's again, that's uh, like. Uh, Waltman said, that's uh, what you do between spots. 
Arn had wrapped his leg around and Bobby was just hopping around to get there. I can't wait, man, to see him at, at StarCast. Can't wait. Bobby's still selling that leg, man. These guys have a hell of a match, Conrad. <laughs> I love Arn Anderson. <laughs> uh, uh, What's great that's right. is every now and again, you'll see him do something and you're like, he's just trying to pop the boys with that. Right. But he was teetering on falling down. And then when Bobby nailed him, he took a hell of a, hell of a bump for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And he's going back to the leg. As we would say, that's an old Anderson technique. Take one part of the body, work on it. Render it useless. <laughs> Render it useless. That's the old Arn Anderson line. Mm. He had a lot of great lines. I might play an old Arn Anderson promo for us right here in the middle of this. Okay. Here you go. Here's one of my favorites. it up here in just a minute okay let me know i think these are two of my low-key favorite wrestlers oh don't you yeah they're they have i don't even know if low-key well, i guess maybe low-key because they're not figured into the world title yeah they're not running around with face paint and right right so here we go here's a great arn anderson uh, promo from wtbs crockett's holding the stick for him of all we are proud to represent the nwa we're proud second of all maybe even first of all to represent your company i'm talking jim crockett promotions by being the world tag team champions at various states very easily we are the best at what we do you didn't hear any music you didn't see any face paint you don't see any glitter what you see is plain boots and plain tots and what you also saw was plain wrestling which is on the marquee these days, our business gets glamorized by different aspects and different people. That some of them like to call it showbiz. A lot of people like to think they're stars. I'm telling you myself, Ric Flair, James J. Dillon, know that stars are in the sky and stars are in Hollywood. What we are as professional athletes. And every time we come to a building, you got to know. Your brothers got to know. Those people that have watched us for a lot of years got to know. That's the reason they keep coming back. And last but not least, we got to know that whether we're sick, whether we're hurting a little bit, whether we got problems at home or we had problems making our plane, that we give you 110% because that's what you pay for. And regardless of what you think, Luger, these people that buy these tickets don't pay our salary. His brother and he does, and they pay us real well because we're worth every nickel. Now, when you look in these eyes and you look at that match that just takes place, you see a little Anderson fire coming back because that's my roots. I was learned it. I was taught the old way. It is take a body part and render it useless. And my friend, a three-legged table is worth nothing to anybody. So in the Crockett Cup, that 20-inch arm of yours, Luger, can be just as useless as the one we just showed you. We are the best. We are the horsemen. Dude, what a great promo. I love when he finishes with, we are the best. We are the horsemen and just throws up the four. Again, it goes back to the thing and Arn knew this better than anybody. You know, you need to know how to end an interview. And he knew how to end it with that punctuation mark. Look at that swinging neck breaker. Dude, these guys are working their ass off here. Yes, they are. Meltzer would say at one point, uh, Wyndham came out to interfere, but Pillman was on his heels and chased him away. Eaton then did the leg drop and got the pin and the crowd popped like crazy since they were expecting the screw job and got the clean pin instead. What a concept. Mm -hmm. I guess when you rarely give clean pins in the top matches, it does make the clean pin seem like something special. Three and a quarter stars. Even though they missed the pin on camera. Isn't that crazy? Yep. Fucking TV company. TV company missed it on camera. I'm not blaming you, Dan Bynum. So though, uh, I guess they'll show some of it again, but they, I mean, they, they got Wyndham and, and Pillman almost running 
off stage and here's the finish. Alabama jam. Yes, sir. All right. We'll have look how Aaron took it. And there's the one, two, three. Great celebration by Bobby too. Great celebration by Bobby. So that was good, man. 